the Taiwan Design Center asked me to share some of my expertise with uh, how and where design can help with creating new business opportunities. We all know it's not business as usual. You know, leaders, big business from the past, are struggling to make ends meet today. Some are failing and are emerging millions of US dollars every quarter. Some of them actually even didn't make the downturn and went bankrupt. However, there is a tool to combat these new and interesting times. Um, organizations must work for entrepreneurial greatness through innovation in order to stand out in this uh, competitive market. Innovation is key, not with the only goal of increasing your profits, but with the intent to benefit an ever more sophisticated and more uh, well-informed consumer, thanks to the internet. Design thinking and the design process can actually help with in, this, in these new times. They can actually help you to see that the right value proposition goes to this new and savvy consumer. That's what design thinking and design process does on a higher level. We have to go beyond the obvious and invest in expansive, game-changing innovation. You know, these examples show that breaking the mold in innovation pays off. So companies need to invest in the resources that can, uh, that can not only identify the problems of today, but they can anticipate what the challenges of tomorrow are going to be. And designers and design thinking should be part of those resources. Why? Our creative design thinking will help with identifying some of these problems. Allow me to elaborate. Kodak invented the digital camera in 1975, but they did not market it. Why? Because they thought the digital camera is going to interfere too much with their film business. And that's what Kodak does. We are in the film business. This short-sighted view, we are in the film business, was ultimately their downfall. What Kodak should have realized is that they're actually in the memory capturing business. Poof, the sky is the limit. And that kind of abstract thinking is what designers are very good at. Memory capturing business, very abstract. And then they use the design uh, process as a tool to create scenarios in order to build a, a brighter future. Design thinking needs to be looked at as a force for change, not just a surface representation of things. Design thinking is not only to solve design problems. Design thinking can solve business problems. So to use an example from Create, Corsair came to us and asked us to design for them five new products. They asked this as individual projects, but we had to work on them simultaneously. And unknowingly to Corsair, this was actually a good thing. This was the best way for them to enter this new market you know, of gaming peripherals. Because we were able to convince Corsair to invest into a overarching and overcoupling design strategy. Why? Because the consumer realizes that these products, these five products, are built from the ground up following an overarching strategy and a very strong set of guidelines. These are the products that we designed for them. So what we did is that every keyboard comes with a metal plate inside so that it doesn't bend. And we said, put that as an exposed feature. Show off this metal plate and put it on the outside of the keyboard. And we did that for both keyboards. That looks cool, right? And then we said, OK, a headset also has a metal plate inside in order to create flex. Show that off as an exposed feature. Put it on the outside. And now we said, we can do the same with the mice. We put a base plate, which is metal. We bend it so it looks very cool. And now we put the components on that, and we create stiffness for the mouse. So we created a very strong brand language for our client to the point that out of these two keyboards, the client has already launched five more keyboards. They ha we designed for them two mice. They now have seven mice with the same language on the market. We designed one head headset for them. They now have four headsets on the market with the design language. And for all these extra products, they did not have to hire Create. The design language was so strong that they could go immediately to the supplier and say, here, follow this brand manual, follow this strategy, and build follow-up SKUs on the core brand that we set up for them. And that is design thinking paying off. 
Most of the time in our environment, we're always looking for the right answer. What's the solution? Your boss will ask that twice, three, four times a week. What's the solution? But are you sure that you're trying to solve the right problem? Because we try to solve a problem from our own point of view. You know, uh, your likes and dislikes, your schedule, your behavior. Just try to, to solve the problem from what you think should be done. Or the company's point of view, the processes they are used to, the expertise that they have, the schedule, cost. Don't try to search for a solution until you know you're solving the right problem or trying to solve the right problem. How do you do this? Look at it from different individual point of view. So if you are designing something for a toddler, the toddler is the expert. And you should actually look at the world from his or her point of view. Go and sit on the floor and look up and see how toddlers see the world. We uh, also put a lot of attention in the question, why? Many times the obvious is just some common practice that people have been doing for many years so they don't question it. By questioning the obvious, sometimes you can innovate. So, for instance, how do you connect handles to a walk? You know, you, all, you guys all use a walk, right? You have two handles on a walk. Oh, you rivet. You have these rivets here that, you know, you rivet the handles into a walk, right? That's how it's done. We designed a product for a company making walks. And what we did is we designed the, 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 the unit where the handles are stamped out of the same sheet than the walk itself. And actually, by doing this, there was one less production process. They did not have to rivet the handles into their walk. These guys had been making walks for 30 years. And they, when we presented this to them, they were like, huh? Why didn't we think of this? This, this, this is so common because they were not questioning the obvious. People that are in a certain field for a very long time, they fail to question the fundamentals of their knowledge. And sometimes by asking this stupid question, you have a chance to innovate. And design houses are actually a little bit in an advantageous position there because we are outsiders and we will bring fresh perspective to the table.